Hi everyone. Good Khadesh Kislev. I wanna um I wanna have like a little for bring in. Just talk about an idea that's been on my mind recently, especially in this auspicious time of the month of Kislev, which is Chodesh HaGeula. There's a lot of uh, holidays in this month celebrating the inner light of Tara, specifically Chabad Chassidus. We have Yid Tes Kislev, we have Yud Kislev, Tes Kislev, I'm going backwards, Rosh Chodesh Kislev, which is uh, a really auspicious day in our generation. We know that uh, the Rebbe suffered a heart attack on Shmini Yitzharas. Um, definitely not disconnected from what's going on right now. You know, the Rebbe's above time. I was saying to my Chavrusa, we, we, I learned together with someone, uh, a Shlucha Leia Moskowitz in uh, England, and we were learning together, and we, we were learning actually the mimer that the Rebbe said after he had this heart attack on Shemini Yitzharas. It's a mimer from uh, Parshas Barishas. And we like made the connection together. We were like, oh my gosh, the Rebbe had a heart attack on Shemini Yitzharas. And, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a prophetess. I don't know, you know, what's happening in the spiritual realms, but would it surprise me if the Rebbe's heart attack that he had then is related to what he saw happen to the Jewish people now? I mean, the Rebbe's above time. He sees things way before we do and um, wouldn't, definitely wouldn't shock me if they were intrinsically connected. So, um, but yeah, so the Rebbe had this heart attack on Shemini Yitzharis and then was miraculously went home from the, from the hospital in Rosh Chodesh Kislev. And we know that there's a lot of miracles associated with it because really it was a heart attack that most people would not have survived and certainly not in the condition the Rebbe left in, like just as if nothing had happened and just strong as ever. And the, the Torah that the Rebbe gave us after that heart attack, which was in the 1970s, it was almost like there was a renewal of life and a renewal of chayas and a renewal of Mashiach energy being brought into the world. And yeah, it's a very, 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 very special day. Um, so, so I want to talk a little bit about Chabad Chassidus and its role in the redemption and what that means for us. And I want to start with an incredible story which at first glance is not a great story. It's like a ah kind of story, which you'll see what I mean in a minute, but then we're gonna go deeper and understand what it actually means. So and there's a famous story that the Altar Rebbe's Chassidim came to him and said, when is Mashiach coming? And the Altar Rebbe's response was, the Mashiach you want is never coming and the Mashiach that's coming, you, no one wants. <laughs> so it's like, wait, what? So first of all, it's very important to understand that we have what's called chitzonius or ratzon, or like our external will, and then we have panemius ratzon, our internal will, right? That which we truly want is frequently at odds with what we think we want, right? So this is definitely what the altar of a man. Obviously, every Jew truly wants the true Mashiach and the true transformation that comes with that revelation in the world. Um, but on a chitzonius level, why don't we want that? Because the true Mashiach makes us actually work, right? And I, I want to explain what I mean by that. Um, but first, let's just talk about what Chabad Hasidus accomplished, right? Because we're in Chodesh Kislev and it's the theme of the month. So if you look at the, the Rebbe's first mimer that he ever gave, Basi Lagani, the Rebbe speaks about how each of the Chabad Rebbeim brought the Shechina one Rekia lower, right? So just to give a quick overview, we know that um, through the sins of the Jewish people, uh, the after Matan Torah, the Shekhinah, Shekhinah came down through Moshe Rabbeinu. It says that the sins before Avram Avinu caused the Shekhinah to get repelled. And then Avram Avinu started to bring the Shekhinah back down into this physical world until it came fully back in God's presence with the giving of the Torah. But then we sinned again and the Shekhinah left this world again. Left this world doesn't, didn't, God's presence doesn't actually go anywhere, but became concealed, harder to access. And we had to work hard to, to, uh, to bring the Shekhinah back down. So the Rebbe explains that through Chabad Chassidus and revealing the teachings of, of the Baal Shem Tov in, in such a way that Chabad Chassidus does, which I'll explain in a minute, caused Shekhinah to come back down a little bit, right? We had, we had many generations till it was ready to come fully back down into this world in our generation. So, so, but what does that mean? Like, 
what did the Alter Rebbe do? So we know that the Baal Shem Tov, when he went up to Shemayim and he went to the chamber of Mashiach, Mashiach said to the Baal Shem Tov, when your teachings spread to the four corners of the earth, that's when Mashiach is going to come, right? So what did the Alter Rebbe do with Chabad Hasidus? Actually, the reason why he went to jail on Yates Kislev, there were political things that were happening in the physical world, but Lamaila in the spiritual world, why did the Alter Rebbe go to jail? So when he was in jail, the Baal Shem Tov and the Mesut Shemagad came to him and said to him, you're in jail because you took the teachings of Hasidus and you brought them into such a digestible form that a person could meditate on godly concepts and actually understand God whatever that means to some degree, because God is obviously not understandable, but Alter Rebbe took these teachings of the Baal Shem Tov and made them that we could actually assimilate them in our human minds. That, the, the, the Mazur Chermagin and the Baal Shem Tov basically told Alter Rebbe, you're, you're actually pushing that the Geula is gonna come. And that's why they put you in jail, because the heavens were like, whoa, we're not sure that the world is ready for this. But, but now that you already started, you, you, you can continue and, um, and that's basically what happened. So, so the teachings of Chabad Hasidus actually started this process of the Shechina descending lower and lower down into this world. Why? Well, think about it. When we, we are a small a mini world. So when a Jew processes these godly concepts in their own human mind and in their own heart to the point where even your, your animal soul, even your Yitzhahara can start to love God and understand the purpose of creation. So that's, like, so what the Baal Shem Tov uh, said, the Mashiach said to the Baal Shem Tov is when your teachings go to the four corners of the earth, there's no further corner of the earth than your own Yitzhahara, right? And because we're a mini world, as we assimilated these concepts, they started to spread into the world. It took time, right? It took time. So now let's talk about what, what, what is Mashiach's role. So we know that the Rebbe said many, many times the Chabad Rebbeim were the Mashiach of their generation, right? So Let's go to the halachas of Mashiach. What does Mashiach have to do? Heskes Mashiach, probably Mashiach, right? So this Mashiach, as he functions in his generation, doing the work of Mashiach. And then there's Mashiach Vadai, the, the final redeemer, who actually takes the Jews out of Gauls, may it be immediately today, and brings us to Yerushalayim with Kibbutz Scullius, the, the ingathering of the exiles, and Builds the base of Mikdash, but that's like the pinnacle, the final moment. That's like really what we're on the preposition of, and we're working towards right now. But but what was the Mashiach of the generation accomplishing until that moment? Because you know people have a misunderstanding about Haskis Mashiach, probably Mashiach. They think that probably Mashiach means like he was sitting in some corner, potentially could be the one who does the job of Mashiach, and if Hashem told him to, he would reveal himself and then do the job. But that's not actually what Haskis Mashiach means. Haskis Mashiach means that if God were to say to him, take the Jews out of Gaulus today, we would already have to be able to recognize this person from the things that they were already doing. <laughs> because the Rambam makes it very clear that Mashiach plays a role that has a process to it, okay? So what is one of the things that, that Mashiach has to do? First of all, he himself has to be a tzaddik. He has to be a tzaddik. He has to be a descendant of the house of David. Okay, all the Chabad Rebbeim are direct descendants of the Maharal of Prague, who is a direct descendant, who has a family tree that goes right back to David Melech. So all the Chabad Rebbeim are descendants of David Melech. He has to be a tzaddik. He has to be himself immersed in Torah and mitzvahs and and um, and and care about it and be personally working on himself as a Torah observant Jew, a tzaddik, right? Someone who actually really loves and fears God. Okay, he also has to be someone who influences the Jewish people. That he causes them to do Torah and mitzvahs. He also has to repair, repair breaches in avoda. Like if he sees that there's certain weaknesses in the Jewish community, certain mitzvahs that they've gotten a little lax on, to encourage them to be careful with it, right? And he has to fight the wars of God, and those can be spiritual wars or they can be physical wars. So let's just look at the altar of himself. How did he fit that criteria? First of all, we already said he's a descendant of the house of David. We already said that he has to care about the Jewish people and influence them in the way of Torah and Mitzvah. So if you look at the Tanya, right? The entire Tanya is literally a book of influencing the Jewish people, not only to love and fear God and to keep Torah and Mitzvah carefully, but also he was repairing breaches. There was a lot of letters to his Hasidim about how they were getting lax in davening. There was too much talking going on, right? The altar of it encouraged them to increase their tzedakah, right? 
and he fought the wars of God because there was a humongous opposition within the community of Israel itself against the teachings of Hasidus. It was a holy war that was started by the Vilna Gaon because the Vilna Gaon had real fears that perhaps the teachings of Hasidus might actually take people away from the service of God. We see with the test of time that the opposite happened and that the teachings of Hasidus um, only strengthened people's fear and love of God and made them want to serve God more. But the altar of was fighting the, the opposition within our, the Jewish people themselves. He also went to jail because the Russian government was uh, actually accused him of being a traitor. Why? He was actually giving money to settlers in Israel um, to help the tzaddikim and the Jewish people who were settling in the land of Israel. So he sent a lot of money there. Happened to be that Israel was an al Turkey and Israel were allies, and Russia was, um, Turkey was a um, an enemy to the Russian government. So, on a very like physical level, they saw him as a traitor of the Russian government. But he wasn't. He was he was obviously just sending money to the Jewish people. But again, he had to fight wars of God because in order to support Israel, he had to go against the Russian government. So we see all of this, right? So it's not that the Alter Rebbe came and was like, probably the Mashiach and it didn't work out. No, he literally brought the Shekhinah one rakia lower, right? Through all of his activities as the Mashiach of his generation. So, you know, and, 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 and so interestingly, we see in the time of the Rebbe Rashab's generation, the Rebbe actually, I don't know if it's the Rebbe Rashab who, who called his Hasidim this, or if it's the Rebbe, that I'm not sure on, but the Rebbe called the Hasidim, the Tam Chitimimim of the Rebbe Rashab, soldiers of the house of David. Literally, they're soldiers. Why? Well, so the Rebbe Rashab, now we're skipping ahead many generations, each of the Chabad Rebbeim fought wars of God and increased the Jewish people's observance of Torah and mitzvahs, and all of these things Alter Rebbe did, all the Chabad Rebbeim did it in different ways in their generations. So the, so the, what was the Rebbe Rashab's war that he fought on behalf of God for the Jewish people to bring the Shekhinah even lower? He created Tam Chetimimim. Tam Chetimimim is a yeshiva that actually had Hasidic teachings in the Seder, right? So if you think there were people who were opposed to the teachings of Hasidus in the altar of his time, then the Hasidic teachings were, you know, you learned it in the morning, you learned it in the evening. It wasn't a part of the learning Seder. Bachram weren't going to yeshiva and learning Talmud in Hasidus. So when the Alter Rebbe created Tam Chetaminim, it was a little war of God because he was like, no, these teachings of Hasidus that get you to know God and love God and fear God, they're going to become a part of the learning Seder, of the daily learning Seder in the yeshivas. So that inflamed the Masnagdim very much in that time. But but that's that that was how he... But but the reason why I'm mentioning the Rebbe Rashab is because he called his Tam Chetaminim, or the Rebbe called his Tam Chetaminim, soldiers of the house of David, right? The Mashiach Shabbador, the Mashiach of the generation, he doesn't do everything on his own. He sends out his soldiers, right? And this, I'm getting to the, the Alter Rebbe's story now of the Mashiach you want is never coming, and the Mashiach you're going to get you don't want. What, what, what's the pattern here? The Mashiach encourages and and inspires and empowers but the work is on us right so when we think of Mashiach we think magic wands all the problems go away no Mashiach gives us all the tools he gives us the tools and the direction but the way that we reveal our spark of Mashiach is by being inspired by Mashiach and then going out and being a soldier or being a shliach if you want to use our generation's language okay and this is very important to realize so speaking about the, the, um, the opposition that the Alter Rebbe got towards the spreading of the teachings of Hasidus, right? So the, the true concern that maybe perhaps the teachings of Hasidus would take people away from God. So really that final battle was won by the Friedrich Rebbe. So now talking about actual physical fighting the wars of God, the Friedrich Rebbe basically single-handedly with the help of all of his shluchim, his Hasidim, fought the Russian regime the evil Russian regime, who people don't even realize what a horrible Holocaust was happening in Russia for years and years and years, but they had such a propaganda machine going that they wanted the world to see them as kind, that what was happening beneath the scenes and the way the Jews suffered in Russia for a very long time is, is not even as well known as the Holocaust is. And it was, it was, it was horrific what was going on over there. And the Friedrich Rebbe was considered their main enemy he was their main enemy. He was in literally in the Kremlin. His picture was on the wall as the main enemy. Why? Because he defied them. 
They wanted the they wanted the Jewish children to go to their Russian schools where they were going to indoctrinate them to not believe in God, and you couldn't like you would get in trouble if you didn't sign your kids up to those schools. And the all, the Friedrich the Friedrich Reb was like, do not sign your kids up to those schools. Have Mysteris Nefesh not to sign your kids up to those schools. And if you didn't work on Shabbos in Russia, you basically starved. And I mean, the, the Friedrich Rebbe created an underground network of mikvahs and yeshivas and, 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 and kosher food, whatever you needed to be an observant Jew. The only way you could be an observant Jew is if you went to Tamchi to meet them in Russia. And so the whole fear that the Misnagdom had that, that Hasidus would take people away from, uh, from being an observant Jew, the only way to be an observant Jew in Russia during the, the Russian, like, during the Stalinistic regime was to, to go to a Lubavitch school. And so really that was like the, I, I, the, the way I see it is like the, the Friedrich Rebbe like chopped off the head of like the, the, the real evil that was in the world. Now I know we're seeing some evil now in our generation. Someone explained to me, it's kind of like if you like kill a snake, the, the rattle still kind of rattles a little bit. Like it's like the evil is like gasping for its last you know, breath. So it's like really, really coming to the surface, which I want to get to in a minute. But so, so, but my point that I'm trying to explain is that the, the Friedrich Rebbe in his role as Mashiach sent people to go do Maseris Nefesh. Like when he sent people to Russia to hand out matzah on Pesach, he told them to give their wife a get because people didn't know if they would come back alive. That's the Mashiach the altar I was talking about. He's a Mashiach who's going to make you a Messiris Nefesh and get out there and give your life to transform the world. Because that's, and, and that is really our Panemius will. It's really what we want. We really came down to this world because it says God consulted with us and said, we're going to do this, right? Like you're, I'm going to send you down to a world. It's going to be dark. There's going to be opposition. You're going to forget about me, but, but, but you're gonna have like a spark of your soul's gonna be in there, and you're 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 gonna you're gonna have moments of remembrance, and you're gonna push through, and we're gonna do this together, and you're gonna bring the gula, right? And we were like, yes, we're, we're we're gonna do this, and then we get here, and we're like, wait, hold on a second. When's Mashiach coming? I'm gonna take all my problems away, and our neshama inside is going, no, 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 no. We said we were gonna do this together. You're gonna work for Mashiach. You're not. Mashiach's not coming and doing it all for you. You're going to work for Mashiach, right? Like people would come to the Rebbe and say, Rebbe, just bring Mashiach right now. And the Rebbe would look at them and say, it's up to you and you and you and you. We all have to do our part. That's the point, right? And that's actually what we truly want. But we have to tap into our more inner will, okay? So, so now let's get to our generation, right? So the Rebbe actually said the War of Gaulus is over which is very confusing right now. I understand there's like all this evil kind of popping up, but I want to explain to you what, what, what I, the way I understand it. Okay. What does it mean? The war of Gauls is over. It looks like there's still some serious darkness that we're dealing with right now, but you have to understand that one of the main definitions of Gaulus is that there's an oppressive government, not allowing us to play our role. Like I was just watching a, um, uh, like a little for bringing between Shifrahana, Hendry, and um, and Simon Jacobson, and he was saying like, look, no one's holding us back right now. We're we're broadcasting this these Torah teachings right now on YouTube to however many millions of people or billions of people want to watch it. No one's actually holding us back from doing the job that we need to do. So in the times of the Alter Rebbe and a lot of the other Chabad Rebbeim, like the Friedrich Rebbe that we just spoke about, there were actual regimes holding them back from actually doing the mission that we came down to this world to do. So we were up against tremendous darkness and whatever mitzvahs we could squeeze out or influence that we could manage to have on the world, it was very measured. In our times, yes, there is still some darkness, but nothing is holding us back from doing what we need to do to, 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 to affect that final transformation. And so the way I understand it when the Rebbe is saying the war of Gauls is over is because the world is our oyster now. We can completely turn it over if we have our head properly, you know, aligned with the Rebbe's teachings. We can go full-fledged into the Gaula now and all the opposition will melt. But we have to realize, A, our responsibility, that Mashiach doesn't come and take the problems away. Mashiach comes and gives us all the solutions to the problems. But we have to actually listen and do our role. And then things can happen very fast. Like, 
it, it can seem like the world is so big and how are we going to do this and how are we going to accomplish it? There's so much to do. There's Sheva Mitzvahs to spread. There's still Jews who don't know about Torah and Mitzvahs. We have to let people know the Rebbe's message, the, 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 the announcement of the Gula, the opportunity that we have in front of us, all the resources that we have to, to go out there and, 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 and completely change the world. It seems like we have a lot of avenues, but we also have a, a lot to do. And it seems like the world's very big and we feel very small. But you also have to remember that the Rebbe also said that the Gullus is so thin right now. It's like, because basically we won the war of Gullus and now it's just a matter of transforming the world into a world of Gaula. And it's, the world's ready. The Rebbe said it so many times in so many different ways. So, so we shouldn't feel overwhelmed because the Rebbe also said, A, it could be one thing that completely tips the scales and causes the whole thing to turn over, right? But we have to do our efforts. Like we're not saying, please Hashem send Mashiach. Now we're saying, let this effort that I am fully investing myself in be the final thing that makes Mashiach come. But we have to put ourselves into it and feel like it's completely dependent on us with all our kochos to figure out like what Jews are we reaching? How are we spreading the message of the Geula? How are we teaching more Torah? How are we spreading Shabbat Mitzvah? And we have to feel like those efforts will be the thing that will go viral and make the whole thing turn over, right? But like our efforts are really needed and required to make this go fast. Um, but again, the Rebbe said that basically because the war of Gaulus is over and because the Gaulus is so thin and because the world is so ready to be transformed, it can all happen very fast. But I think the main message that I want to get across in Chodesh HaGaula is if you look at the role of Mashiach, it's to empower us to play our, our spark of Mashiach, to be an influencer and really take responsibility for our portion of the world. And please God, in our doing so, the hachlatas that we make and the efforts that we make to go in this direction, we will cause the whole thing to turn over and we will have the Gula Shlema and everything that we associate with the Gula, but will, it will come um, as a result of our efforts and our work so that it won't be brought of shame which if any of you watched my, uh, my clip that I had on my dream of the Rebbe, the Rebbe came to me in my dream, what a close look, it's like, I still keep thinking about it, I'm like pinching myself. And the Rebbe said to me, um, you know, you have to tell people to stop hiding behind the hide, which I had a whole video about it, which like the hide is like the snake skin or like the concealment of the world. And I, you know, I have a lot of interpretations of this dream, but I feel like the Rebbe was also saying like, Stop hiding, like come out and do your part to bring the gula because I don't think people realize how powerful they are, like that they can actually affect the gula if they put themselves into it and really realize the responsibility they have. But then the Rebbe looked at me and said, I could do it myself, but then it would be bread of shame, right? So the Rebbe is counting on each of us to do our part and it doesn't have to take long. Let's do it together. Chodesh gula, where the light of Hasidus is shining, the lights of our souls are shining. Uh, we could do this together and cause a ghoulish lima now.